This video will be a beginner's guide on proper violin fingering and placement. There are several positions or areas of finger placement on the violin, but as a beginner, the first one you will need to learn is called first position. First position includes the first or lowest five notes that you can play on each violin string. Since violins don't have frets or marks that show you where to put your fingers the way guitars do, one of the most challenging aspects of learning the instrument is finger placement. On the violin, if you don't have your finger in exactly the right spot, even if it's just a hair off, the note can come out sounding out of tune. The most common way to get around this issue is to place finger tapes on the fingerboard that can show you where to place your fingers. Over time, and after thousands of repetitions, your fingers will develop something we call muscle memory, and eventually you will be able to remove the tapes and play in tune without them. Most beginners keep their tapes on anywhere from six months to a couple of years depending on the student. Here's what you will need. Some finger tapes. You can find a roll of finger tapes online or at your local violin shop. Or you can use pinstripe tape for cars found in an automotive shop, a chromatic tuner or a smartphone tuning app, your violin, and a pencil. You will first want to make sure your violin is in tune. You can tune it using a chromatic tuner or a smartphone tuning app. It is imperative to get each string exactly in tune before beginning to apply your tapes, so you may want to check your tuning a couple of times. Once you have tuned your violin, place your first finger about one inch or less down from the top of the fingerboard on the G string and pluck the string. Look at your tuner and move your finger around until the tuner reads A and the tuner lights up green with the tuner needle in the middle of the dial signifying that your A is in tune. Use a pencil to mark the spot on the side of your fingerboard and then slide a two or three inch long strip of tape under the strings and press down firmly right by the pencil mark to go across the entire fingerboard with the tape and wrap around the neck of the violin. This will be your first finger tape. Place your first finger, your index finger, on the tape and pluck one string at a time looking at the tuner to make sure it reads A on the G string, E on the D string, B on the A string, and F on the E string. If the tuner reads each note as in tune, the tape has been placed correctly. You may need to adjust it a few times and double check with the tuner before it is perfectly placed. The same process will follow for the placement of each tape. The second finger tape will go down roughly one inch or less away from the first tape. Adjust your second finger, your middle finger, on the G string until the tuner reads B and then put your tape under the string and press firmly. When the second finger is placed on the second finger tape on each string the tuner should read B on the G string, F sharp on the D string, C sharp on the A string, and G sharp or A flat which is the same thing on the E string. The third finger tape will go down about a half inch away from the second finger tape. Adjust your third finger, your ring finger, on the G string until the tuner reads C and then put your tape down. When the third finger is placed on the third finger tape on each string, the tuner should read C on the G string, G on the D string, D on the A string, and A on the E string. The fourth finger tape will go down about an inch away from the third finger tape. Adjust your fourth finger, your pinky finger, on the G string until the tuner reads D and then put your tape down. When the fourth finger is placed on the fourth finger tape on each string, the tuner should read D on the G string, A 
on the D string, E on the A string, and B on the E string. Please note that the rough one inch, half inch, etc. measurements that I am using for spacing are based on the neck of a full size or 4-4 violin. If you are putting tapes on a smaller violin, everything will be the same except that the tapes will be placed closer together. The main thing to pay attention to is getting the correct readings for the notes on the tuner. Now that you have all four tapes down, you will know where to place your fingers while playing in first position. Once you've put your tapes on, the next step will be to learn and memorize where each note in first position is and how it corresponds to the tapes. In music, we use the first seven letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G to describe each note. Once you've gotten to the end of the cycle and played all the way to G, you would start back over with A again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And the sequence would repeat again and again. So, looking at your violin, start with your G string and place your first finger on the first finger tape. This note would be A because it comes right after the G and we would have started over in the cycle. Then place your second finger on the tape. The next letter in the alphabet is B, right? So then this note would be B. Your third finger would be C, your fourth finger would be D, and so forth and so on. You can look at the chart to see where all of the notes fall on your tapes. With time, you will need to memorize all of these notes and become so familiar with them that you are able to identify them without having to stop and think. Making flashcards with a drawing of the note on one side and a label of what the note is called on the other side is a really good way to help yourself memorize the notes. There are a lot of other notes that fall in between the notes on the tapes, but the reason why we start with the notes in the above chart is that these are the most commonly used and therefore the easiest to learn notes. For instance, most beginner music or beginner books that you would start with would contain songs or exercises that use these notes. Once you've memorized all of the notes on the tapes and where they fall on the violin, you can start to learn the notes that fall in between the tapes as illustrated in the chart below. You won't need to put tapes down for all of these other notes because after getting familiarized with the first set of notes we learned, you will be able to rely on the existing tapes, your fingers, and muscle memory as a guide. You have probably noticed that there are the standard notes labeled as A, B, C, etc. And then there are other notes such as C with a little pound sign next to it, that's C sharp, or B with a little symbol next to it that looks like a little B, that's B flat, or G sharp, A flat, etc. You may be wondering what those funny symbols mean. When you see the pound symbol, it means sharp. A sharp note, for instance, a C sharp, is a half step higher than just a regular C. When you see a little symbol that looks like a little B, that means flat. A flat note, for instance, B flat, is a half step lower than just a regular B. If you look at the charts above, you will see that some of the sharp notes fall on the tapes, but for many others such as B flat on the G string or G sharp on the D string, your fingers will need to stray from the tapes in order to play these notes. By sliding the nearest finger either above or below the tape, you can accomplish these notes. For instance, in order to play the B flat on the A string, Take your first finger, which is normally positioned to play a B on the first finger tape, and slide it a half step below the first finger tape to turn this note into a B flat. You can use your tuner to make sure your finger is in the correct spot at first.
and that's it. Once you've memorized all of the notes in both of the charts above and can play them fluidly and in tune, you will know all of the notes in first position. Most beginners spend a couple of years studying first position while they are developing their fingering technique, bow technique, learning how to read music, play songs, perfecting intonation, etc. Once you have a good foundation and grasp on all of these things, you can delve into learning more advanced positions on the violin, such as third and fifth positions. In the meantime, I hope this information has helped you and I wish you the best on your musical journeys.